All right. Good day, everyone. This is Jason Strait with the Pass Club Virtual Group. Uh, before we get started here with our uh, presentation today, which is extending Azure Data Studio with PowerShell with Mike Nelson, I've just got a few announcements to go through. So I'm going to whip through those and then pass things over to Mike. So the first thing is that this virtual group is sponsored by Microsoft Azure. Uh, Microsoft Azure sponsors the virtual group in hopes that folks will take a deeper look at Microsoft Azure for bringing their data platforms out to the cloud. Uh, being that most of the presentations that we uh, do here is uh, Microsoft Azure focused, uh, that's probably a safe bet. Uh, if you are not yet a member, uh, if you want to find out more about sessions that are coming up, uh, go out to cloud.pass.org and sign in and log in to subscribe to our newsletter. The newsletter lets you know when new sessions are coming up and uh, keeps you informed on everything. Uh, speaking of upcoming sessions, uh, we do have quite a few sessions in the pipeline. I think after today, we still have 30 sessions that are scheduled between now and the end of um, April. Um, every Tuesday, Thursday available, I think, between now and uh, January 31st has been slotted. So we do have lots of sessions that are coming up. Uh, so please go out and take a look and see if there are things that appeal to you. There's lots of opportunities to learn. Uh, coming up next week is a special session. Uh, so I've uh, been mentioning this the last few weeks. It's an NDA, NDA only session. So you have to have an NDA with Microsoft in order to attend. Uh, and that is a special sign up for it. Uh, but if you do sign up with the reg regular way for the session, I will send over a email reminding you that you have to sign up for that special to the special way. Even though we have sessions all the way through the end of January, I'm trying to fill in all the way through the end of April. Uh, make sure that we have lots of content, give people lots of opportunity to prepare sessions. So if you are interested in speaking, uh, there are uh, there's a form that you can fill out. Uh, fill that out, we'll get you on the calendar. Alternatively, you can just email me at cloud.pass.org. Coming up this fall is Pass Summit 2020. Uh, it's going to be all virtual summit this year. And if you want to get a discount on it and you have not yet registered, you can do so by using our discount code that's there on the screen. And it'll get you $50 off your registration. Oh, excuse me. Uh, this virtual group is part of a number of virtual groups that PASS helps to uh, put together. Uh, these virtual groups focus on a lot of different areas, uh, such as uh, different languages and cultures like global Spanish and global Chinese, or on different aspects of the data platform and building out uh, technology solutions, such as PowerShell and data science. Throughout the session, I expect some of you will have questions. And if you do, please just type them into the question panel that's on the GoToWebinar um, uh, widget. And then at the end of the session, we'll go through all those questions with Mike. And then those are all my uh, announcements. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand things over to Mike for his session today, uh, extending Azure Studio, Azure Data Studio with uh, PowerShell. So let me make Mike a presenter. There we go. Take my mug off the screen. Am I good to go? You are good to go. I'll just mute myself so I don't interrupt. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Jason. I appreciate it. Um, to everybody out there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Um, I uh, um, come to you today from uh, the Midwest US, so it's afternoon for me today. And I hope everyone is is uh, being safe in these times of uncertainty and and uh, a little bit of a, a turmoil. But uh, you know, 2020 is almost over with. That's the the thing to look forward to. So um, I'm going to be talking a little bit today about uh, the Azure Data Studio or ADS and uh, using it with PowerShell. Now. Um, I had this big, uh, you know, I use uh, OBS in my presentations. If you're not familiar with that, it's kind of a, you know, uh, it, it's like running a TV studio, if you will, on your computer. And uh, that you know, go to go to webinar doesn't seem to like it that much. So um, it's not going to be as flashy as I wanted it to be, but uh, we'll see if we can um, get through the basics here and just get right to demos after uh, some decks. So um, first off, uh, my deck isn't, uh, there we go. Uh, my name is Mike Nelson. I am a solutions architect at Pure Storage. 
I'm a Microsoft MVP in Cloud and Data Center um, and Azure Advisor, VMware Expert, and a Citrix CTA. This uh, picture that you see of me there is uh, done by one of our uh, MVPs over in uh, across the pond in the in uh, the Netherlands, I believe. I, I think I'm right. Um, her daughter is actually, uh, if you look at that tagline there, little artist R.O. Um, uh, her name is Ro, and uh, um, she put out a thing saying that you know my daughter is trying out this surface and drawing and really getting into it. Um, yeah, or she was trying to save enough money to do that. Um, so uh, I, uh, I gave her a, a little bit of money to draw me up there. It, uh, it looks like a much younger version of me, obviously. Um, but uh, she asked for two of the things that I really love to do. And, and uh, one is, uh, you know, I'm, I really love SpaceX. I'm really involved in, in uh, what they're doing in outer space and, and all the things, all the fun things with that. I always have been. Um, and then also, um, I, I'm not really sure she had the whole desk thing, you know, like she asked, what do you do? And that's <laughs> basically, uh, you know, I'm an architect that uh, uh, sits at a desk a lot and tries to figure stuff out. So um, you can reach me at, at, on Twitter at Mike Nelson IO uh, on GitHub. You can see what I've got out there at Mike Nelson hyphen IO. I've got all my presentations and stuff for the past couple of years out there. And then I do have a, a blog out at MikeNelson.io. You won't find much out there, but um, I do have something. Uh, so that's uh, me. Oh, yeah. And I did want to say that I know that the past user group, um, I've interacted with you before. Uh, the thing about it is, is that uh, there's a lot of database, right? And um, I do a lot of database work now at Pure. But before, I didn't. And uh, so I, I'm a little bit newer to the database end of things. Uh, I admit that, but uh, from a scripting aspect and a framework aspect like PowerShell and Python and stuff like that, I've been doing that for a very long time. So uh, I bring that to the table and uh, you'll see how that kind of inter intermingles a little bit when we start talking about the ADS and and uh, um, things like VS Code. So, all right, what are we going to talk about? Well, we're going to talk about what ADS is, uh, and I apologize for those that have already seen presentations. Um, I, I saw a slide that Jason had up there that had like 30 different pass groups, right? And uh, in uh, doing a little research, I saw that uh, there have been several pass groups that have posted uh, um, some speakers around, you know, what ADS is and everything. So if you've already seen that, I apologize. I am going to go over some of the basics of ADS just so everybody has kind of a baseline um, understanding of it. And we're going to take a look at it, you know, kind of a versus SMSS, SSMS and beyond uh, what uh, um, a little bit of, of in, you know, information going a little bit deeper. Uh, then we're going to look at the extensions, which, you know, include the PowerShell. And uh, I'm going to show a couple extensions, not just PowerShell, but uh, PowerShell is going to be the main one. And uh, finally, get to uh, a little bit of demo, as long as the demo gods agree. So uh, what it is, it's first, uh, you know, ADS, Azure Data Studio, um, used to be called SQL Operations Manager SQL, uh, or um, SQL Ops, as some folks called it, but it has evolved since then and uh, has uh, emerged as uh, ADS. It is actually um, a child uh, of VS Code, so it uses the same uh, um, type of uh, infrastructure or framework um, as VS Code. And if you use VS Code, then you'd be able to use ADS without any problem whatsoever. If you use ADS, um, you would be able to jump right into the bandwagon of using VS Code pretty easily. It is uh, multi-platform database-wise. So, you know, you got uh, um, anything you'd like out there. Um, it As long as it can take a connection as is, you know, if it can take a Postgres or a SQL, um, an RDS up in in, uh, in uh, uh, AWS, um, but you know it is still somewhat limited. I mean, you can't directly communicate with MySQL unless you uh, get a third-party uh, extension for it. So they're still trying to get some of those connectors and stuff. But it and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I'm not really sure why because Visual Studio can do it, but um, you know I'll, I'll talk about that in a little while. And then finally, it's multi-platform, just like uh, VS Code, right? VS Code is uh, um, built to, to be multi-platform um, and uh, can run on OSXX, 
Linux, and of course, Windows. So, um, and I don't have my slides set up correctly, but that's all right. Um, what it is, it is based off of a, a technology called Electron, which I don't know if you're familiar with at all. It has JavaScript, HTML, and, and CSS. Um, that's exactly what VS Code is as well. It's based off the same, the same framework. So uh, from a management tool perspective, you're gonna start seeing uh, probably more of this because if you look at uh, the WAC, uh, the Windows Administration Center, um, they're not Electron, but they have a lot of components of Electron in there. So, um, you know, just something to look forward to, uh, you know, what might be coming because you're trying to get to a, a, a you know, a multi-platform type of scenario. And uh, obviously the, the WAC is web-based, but um, in future iterations, you know, who knows what's gonna happen. And it is lightweight. Sorry for the mess up on the slide there. Uh, it is uh, extremely lightweight in terms of when you install it, <clears throat> it only installs the core. The electron is very, uh, very minimal. And uh, it only when you start adding a bunch of extensions and especially heavy extensions like Python and stuff like that, um, then it starts to, to blow it up a little bit. But otherwise, it's, it's pretty light. And of course, it is uh, now open source. So uh, just like a lot of uh, products that Microsoft is doing, they're open sourcing it. Um, some of it is under MIT license. I'm not sure what license, um, if it uh, is an Apache license or not. On the other side, I think Microsoft came up with their own. But uh, I've always been kind of curious because some Microsoft products have different licenses than others. Uh, so that's, you know, it, but it is open source. Uh, you, it will uh, connect to, you know, obviously on-prem, hybrid, and cloud uh, databases and instances. Um, it is a shortcut, uh, kind of, uh, I don't know, centric application, if you will. Uh, BS Code has tried to make things a little bit more UI, uh, but it also has the back end um, where you can do pretty much everything with a keyboard shortcut. Uh, ADS is really shortcut driven. I mean, if you wanted to do everything in ADS, Going through the UI might take you a little while. It's take longer than doing the keyboard shortcuts. I mean, obviously you can do a shortcut quicker, but um, for folks that were born on a UI, it, you know, uh, you just bring up those keyboard cheat sheets that I have a link to at the end, and you'll you'll see, uh, you know, all the things you can do with it. And integrated terminals. This is also a component of VS Code. It allows you to integrate terminals, uh, if you will, uh, Bash, PowerShell, um, and uh, WSL, command line, you name it. So I'll show that in the uh, demonstration. And there is so much more. Obviously, you can get a, a T-SQL editor, query results, task history, management dashboard, extensions, workspaces, Object Explorer, connection management, on dot, 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 a whole bunch more. Um, if nobody's familiar with workspaces, that's something to check out. If you do a lot of work with, uh, you know, you're working on projects, especially if you're on the the uh, back end of, of development or anything like that with databases, um, definitely check out workspaces and how they 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 actually work and what you know their whole project methodology, because it's really interesting how, how uh, some developers uh, that focus on databases have have utilized those in order to manage their entire application from back end to front end um, using a workspace. It's really kind of cool. All right, versus SSMS, SSMS, I can't say that today. Versus SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio. Um, as we know, SSMS, SSMS, I'm just gonna stop. I'm just gonna say SQL Manage Server Management Studio. Um, it has actually gone to, well, I think it's right now at 18.6 or 18.7 in beta. I don't, I don't remember, but they seem to be pumping out a couple versions here in the last six, eight, 12 months. Um, so I remember when 18 and 18.5 were around for a very long time. But uh, anyways, uh, when you take a look at the two, obviously, you know, the SSMS is a little bit, uh, and I, I use this term, for lack of another one, a little fatter, if you will. Um, it's uh, it's got a lot more component to it. It's it's really really SQL centric. I mean, it, uh, you guys have been, you know you've probably been using it for a long time. You know this. I'm not telling you anything new. 
but uh, and you have more functionality in it than ADS. ADS does not have everything that SSMS does. And I've got a slide showing that as well. So uh, yeah, heavy, it's not keyboard friendly. It does have keyboard shortcuts, but it's still not intuitive like ADS is or VS Code is. Um, there is no IntelliSense uh, built into it. Uh, and I don't think the new version has it. I don't know if they're gonna put it in or not. Um, it is not easily extendable. I don't know if you've ever tried to write an extension for it. Um, I have, and uh, you know, depending on what you're doing, it can be a lot of fun using uh, you know Yeoman and trying to get that all set up. Um, there is no real source control kind of sorta with it. Um, you can't do much theming, and I spelled that wrong. T H the. You can't do much dumbing if you want to say that. Um, so you can't really, you know. It, it's just what it is. It's a it's a UI that you have to deal with. Um, the big pain point that I've heard a lot about, and of course, you know, going back to saying I'm I'm not a DBA, but one of the big pain points was not the ability not to be able to do exports, uh, be able to export the stuff CSV, JSON, and, and Excel. Um, you know, that's that's big. Um, uh, and then notebooks. Uh, notebooks, uh, uh, you don't have that ability like you do in ADS. Um, so you have the ability, I don't know if everybody's familiar with Jupyter Notebooks, but if you are on a uh, development or if you are a developer or you're involved in a development project, you should really get to know them. Um, this is another thing you should get to know because uh, notebooks save you a tremendous amount of time um, <clears throat> when you start uh, working with uh, projects, but also reusable code and being able to uh, share those notebooks with other folks and, and uh, you know, um, check them out if you're, if you're uh, involved in that at all. <clears throat> um, ADS uh, versus SMS uh, comparison chart, they actually have one out there <clears throat> that Microsoft puts out so you know, um, hey, should I should I go to this or shouldn't I other? Uh, but <clears throat> obviously in true SQL fashion, select, replace, use SSMS, you know, search for SMS and replace it with ADS, go. Not for everybody, you know, and uh, this is where you get into it. Um, you use Azure Data Studio if you, you know, and you need to run it on Mac or Linux, obviously, you definitely want to use it. Um, it's a lot of folks that have been running Macs for a while, some DBAs. Um, yes, there are DBAs that run Macs, um, but uh, they, you know, they got tired of, of having to do the log into a server and, or a Windows server or something like that. So um, definitely multi-platform, cross-platform is where you want to be. Um, you're connecting to a SQL 2019 big data cluster, uh, editing, executing queries, really, I mean, you, you know, some of you have that down path in SSMS, so I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but um, quickly chart and visualize, that I agree with because you can quickly do that and uh, um, execute most administrative tasks, uh, integrated terminal using SQL command or PowerShell. Uh, that is exactly uh, what I'm talking about today. And uh, minimal need for wizard. If you don't need a wizard, I mean, these, this thing doesn't have a lot of wizards unless the extension provides the wizard. So if you have third-party extension or even extension provided by Microsoft, it could be, you know, could have a wizard built into it, but otherwise by default, there isn't a lot. And uh, you don't need to do uh, a bunch of uh, deep administration. And by that, I mean configuration, not just administration, but configuration. But keep using uh, SSMS if you, you know, wanna do that database, the admin task thing, um, you're doing config, deep config, you're doing security, okay, because uh, ADS is not really a tool that has much to do with security unless you want to, you know, use SQL command for it. Um, PowerShell, you can do that as well, but natively in SSMS, it's a lot easier to do that, obviously, right click and be able to do logins and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, reports for SQL Server Query Store and, uh, you know, performance, tuning advisors, dashboards, all that kind of fun stuff. That's all all there and not in ADS or very limited in ADS. Um, import and export of backpacks. I don't, I never use that, so I can't really comment on that, but that's what they say. Um, and then uh, registered servers. Want to control SQL services on Windows? 
Yeah, you can do that in ADS now. Um, that was something that it came along, but it's still not as elaborate as SSMS. So extensions, we talk about extensions. Um, you obviously have this little icon inside of uh, ADS and uh, VS Code. And uh, what you can do is you can pull extensions from what they call the ADS library, which is specific to Azure Data Studio. Uh, you can pull it from the VS Code library, or you can pull it from my custom library. You can actually, you know, uh, roll your own, if you will. Um, and you could roll your own as a something you put out in GitHub, or you could do it uh, just by, you know, I'm creating a, a physics file and, you know, passing it along to a friend. Um, but uh, PowerShell itself is actually uh, a extension you can install right from ADS. You can actually, you could go out and, you know, uh, install it via PowerShell. But the uh, easiest way is just to go out to extensions and install it that way. And I'll show you that. So the de facto standard, if you're talking about PowerShell and uh, SQL specifically, DBA tools. If you haven't used DBA tools, where have you been? Um, DBA tools, uh, people on this call have probably contributed to DBA cool, tools, and I have no doubt that there's probably like a couple dozen experts on this call about DBA tools. So I don't need really to be an expert. I'm going to use them a lot. Um, but there's over 500 commandlets now, and I'm telling you, just trying to... <laughs> Just trying to go through them a little bit and figure out which ones I need to use sometimes can be a little daunting, but uh, um, you know they're doing a really good job at it. They're, they're, uh, you can do just about everything with DBA tools. And Microsoft, uh, you know, try as they might, trying to you know add uh, some native stuff uh, from SQL and the SQL uh, SQL PS uh, commandlets. Yeah, nice try. Um, you still don't match what DBA tools can give you. Um, I know that they've got some things that DBA tools, it takes them a little while to, to create a wrapper around or to, to you know, be able to uh, code up, but uh, um, I still go, my first route, my first go-to is DBA tools. So, so uh, what I want to do is I want to basically take you through um, a little example of what a PowerShell command is. So I don't know how many folks on the call are actually have used PowerShell, so I, again, baselining. Um, but this is a PowerShell command. Um, when you look at it, it's a commandlet, like it says on the bottom there, it's a get child item, okay, with the path, the filter, sys, uh, asterisk sys, and then hyphen force. But we're gonna break this down. And when you take a look at this, you're looking at it from that's the commandlet, okay, get child item. Now. When you break down a PowerShell commandlet, there's always two components to a commandlet. There is always a verb and there's always a noun. And it's always verb noun, verb noun, get, set, um, list, uh, restore, remove, um, invoke. Okay, so there's always a verb to start out. And the second is always a noun. You won't find a verb in that, in that, in that spot. So whenever you work with commandlets, it's always going to be verb hyphen noun that doesn't i mean that's that's the core of powershell framework from there we go to a positional parameter and a positional parameter is where the commandlet expects a, cer a, a certain parameter to be in a position on the command command line okay so if you look at a, a, a command and we'll take a look at one but it'll actually say whether it's a positional parameter it's something that they should I'm not saying everybody does it, but they should say it if it is positional. Um, but, you know, you'll see in the examples where they want you to put it. Otherwise, you can drop it anywhere if it is strictly positional or not. And then you have a name parameter. A name parameter is, you know, where it has a hyphen in front of it. That means that it has to be a parameter um, that is defined for the commandlet to use, uh, but it can be anywhere in the command line. It doesn't have to be, you know, right after the, the commandlet. And then finally, a switch parameter. Now, a switch parameter is usually the parameters that are the what they call common parameters, and that includes things like hyphen force, hyphen verbose, hyphen what if, things like that. And those are switch parameters, and they allow for you to do extra things or um, you know additional things, if you will, to uh, an existing um, commandlet or command line in PowerShell. 
So as an example, if you were to put a switch parameter in of hyphen what if, that means it'll run that command, okay, that full command line with the commandlet, but it won't actually execute it. It just does it and it returns what it would have done. And this is good to test, obviously, commandlets out. So this is really good to understand because you need a basic understanding of, of uh, you know, the PowerShell command line. And then I'm just going to throw out a couple of, uh, you know, commands uh, to learn. If you're just learning PowerShell, these are these are things that you uh, should, without a doubt, take time to learn. I mean, don't waste any time. Hit every one of them because these are your core commands, okay? Um, get help. So get help. Obviously, you do a get help with a command, uh, with a commandlet. Uh, it'll come back and give you the help, but then it gives you options to expand that help. You can you know, use a uh, parameter, again, hyphen full, um, hyphen examples. And what that does is that gives you more help. But whenever you're stuck on a commandlet, use get help, okay? Update help. Update help uh, actually came along in, ooh, what was that? Um, sometime in 5.0, maybe in 3, uh, I don't remember. Anyways, update help allows for dynamic help updating. So when someone puts out a, a, a module that can, has commandlets, um, they can have a dynamic help uh, manifest, as they call it. Um, it's basically an XML file. And what it does is it allows you to dynamically update that help, right? So the help doesn't have to be packaged with the commandlet. There's actually in the manifest file, there's a, there's a link to go to that help and it can automatically update. So if you run an update help, it'll go, PowerShell will go out for every module that it has and it'll try and update, you know, whatever helps out there. Um, Git command, Git command tells you exactly what commands are available inside of a module. So as an example, if you do a Git hyphen command on and do a space DBA tools, you will get 500 plus um, responses and that screen will just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. Um, but it's giving you all the commandlets that are possible um, inside of a you know specific uh, uh, module or all modules. If you just do a git command, it's going to give you everything, right? Um, git member. Git member allows you to look at what properties uh, belong to a uh, a command. So, uh, or what what properties belong to objects that are returned by a command uh, in technical sense. So when you run something like a get process, okay, what a get process does is that it just goes out and looks at, you know, what processes are running on your machine. If you do to get member on those processes, it brings back the object um, properties. So you can query those object properties like, you know, what's the PID, what's the process ID, what's the, you know, all this other kind of fun stuff that goes along with what a process is. So get member is something really good to learn, especially I found dealing with databases and instances because you always have to start looking at what tables, you know, what 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 uh, you know, what rows and, and or columns, you know, things like that. Get member can really help you out with that when you're dealing with databases. And then finally, one I added is called show command. This one was actually uh, part of PowerShell 5.1. It was taken out in PowerShell Core 6, which um, I ranted and raved about uh, in terms of it was a big mistake and they brought it back in seven, which is awesome. So uh, I will show that command to you if you'd like. Uh, obviously, uh, I see all you raising your hands. I can't see you. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the show command will obviously bring a commandlet up and it will give you a UI representation of the command. So you can actually type in, you know, in the UI with the, you know, it shows you what parameters it, it requires, what it needs. And then, you know, you can execute it right from there or you can just, you know, copy it and use it later, whatever you want to do. But it's better than, kind of a little bit better than doing a get help because the show command gives you all that in one in a nice little UI. So, all right. So here's some resources to look at. Obviously, GitHub, uh, you know, where ADS is, uh, a fact that Microsoft has, which is kind of cool because it, it does outline some of the limitations. If you're looking for a specific thing that's limited or anything, you can go out there and look at that. And then VS Code keyboard shortcut cheat, cheat sheets. Um, I don't know of any. Well, wait, I shouldn't say that. Um, there was one person who made a um, ADS an SSMS uh, cheat sheet. I don't remember his name. He was an MVP. Uh, I'd have to look him up again. 
but um, he created a cheat sheet, which he gave out at a conference or gave it out at, at one of his, uh, 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 allowed on his website. And uh, I, I don't think it's been, it's not been kept up to date. The last time I looked, it was like, I don't know, like 2019, 2018. I don't, I don't remember. And ADS is really, they've come out with a lot more features. I mean, they're coming out with features like every other month. So I don't know how current that is, but um, gosh, I can't remember the gentleman's name. Anyways, um, it, the VS Code uh, shortcuts will work as well. Um, there may be some differences, but they should work as well. All right, so I am gonna switch over my screen here as long as I don't have a problem doing that. Um, okay, that went okay. I think it did. All right, so right now, um, hopefully you are looking at a, you know, my screen, uh, my desktop. And what you can see here is uh, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the GitHub uh, repo that I talked about, which is Azure Data Studio, <clears throat> sorry. Um, obviously you can download everything. I really encourage you if you wanna get into it is to download the Insider's builds and use those. Um, <clears throat> for the simple fact that Insider builds are, you know, besides having the latest and greatest, um, there's a lot of cool stuff that you can use, uh, you know, and uh, um, sometimes you get things that break. So it's, it's if you'd like to be on bleeding edge, um, get the insider build and use that. <clears throat> For demos and stuff like that, I, I shy away from using insider builds because I have had things break and I don't wanna do that. Um, the One of the th other things I wanna point out here is contributing. I highly recommend, I, I highly, you know, uh, recommend that if you know how to do anything inside of ADS in terms of the development um, with extensions or uh, you know uh, any of the code that you'd like to use and provide snippets, um, they take snippets as well. Um, but you know even localization, we're talking about uh, it's it's open source, but really you know contributing to the community like this is is something that is is just uh, incredible. And uh, if you have the ability to do it or you you know, you have the knowledge to do it, then I, I encourage you to do so. And you can see all these people, they give you, you know, they actually went in and fixed this stuff, which is really, really cool. All right. So um, <clears throat> when you look at ADS, when it first starts up, this is ADS right here. If you, you know, when you do the install, uh, one of the things that's going to happen is you're not going to have like the PowerShell loaded, right? So I've got PowerShell already loaded. But what you want to do is you basically want to go in here and this is the little extensions icon and you want to click on there and what you want to do is you want to type in powershell and when you do that it'll say hey here it is and there'll be a little install button here um, what i'll do is i'll back up here and you can see um, these are all the extensions that are available and the powershell want to come up and it'll say install and then it'll install and you won't even have to restart it'll just you know, uh, it's it's like that's part of the Electron in, uh, back end. It allows these dynamic updates to happen to the application on the fly, which is really cool. So if I wanted to, I could add like uh, Azure Arc. If I'm working with Arc, um, I can just click install here. It'll install. Now it's telling me there's a reload required and that's only for specific extensions. But even if you do a reload, it doesn't, it doesn't miss a beat. Um, boom, reload, everything else comes back up. You know, it, it, it's, right now trying to bring up the page um obviously my maybe my internet connection but it, it you know basically brings everything back up um, very quickly if you had anything else you wanted to install here you can scroll through all these um, i do recommend that you don't necessarily install a lot and the reason is because it will get heavy on ads um, it also take a look at when you look at some of these that are made by individuals see these are all by microsoft right um, but if you actually look at some that are not by Microsoft, they're under, of course, Microsoft's going to recommend their own, right? Um, let me see where are my extensions. Oh, I'm going to get my, oh, I didn't see all of them. Okay, I'm sorry. So I'm going to collapse that. There we go. So if you get down to, say, something like a walk of time, um, I highly recommend that you click on that first 
and you take a look at what it does. Um, but also they're usually, and I don't see one on here, but there's usually a number of downloads. Uh, if I go here, oh, see, this this is different. Now, I didn't know this. Um, this is different than Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code will tell you actually how many people have downloaded it and are using it. So it's not even, it, uh, ADS is different. Now, this is a good, this is a good segue because I can bring up VS Code now and you can see the difference. So this is VS Code, if you haven't looked at this before, but you're going to notice the same extensions. Uh, here and I mean side by side these two look a lot alike except I'm in dark mode um, over here and this one's in light mode and I do that so I know which one I'm in um, but if you take a look at it a lot of it is the same right uh, what I'll do is I'll go extensions here um, if I was to um, I loaded my SQL driver uh, but if I take a look at something that uh, let me take like Google Cloud ooh. See, it tells you there's 120,000 um, and 38 uh, downloads of this. And sometimes you'll get some extensions and have like two downloads. <laughs> I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying make sure you check them out, okay? Because what ADS will do too is ADS will give you a little icon in the upper corner here, uh, and it'll say untrusted. So it some of the, some of the folks don't like to go through the marketplace and add their extensions to the marketplace. So what they do is they give you the option to install an extension from a Visix package. And if you're gonna, you don't have to do this for PowerShell, but if you were gonna install that, you can install like, here, I'd love using something called Prettier VS Code, right? Um, if you aren't familiar with that, you can go out to the uh, Visual Studio Marketplace, okay? Just Google Visual Studio Marketplace. And if you click on Visual Studio Code, these are all the extensions that you can add to VS Code. Now, that obviously there's more than this because it's just trending and recently added. So you can, there's a whole boatload of them. Um, but I love to use something called Prettier. And the reason is because it helps me format my code. And you'll notice there's a lot of variations of it, but this one has got 8.8 .8 million downloads. Obviously, that's probably the one that I want, right? If you click on that, now it'll say install. And, but the thing is, is that's going to install it directly on VS Code. Uh, what you want to do is you actually need to download the Visix package. And uh, so you go over here to download extension. Now you can do this. You can go to the GitHub repo for it and download it there. Otherwise, this is a direct link to download it. And if you click the download extension, it'll actually say, okay, where do you want to save this, you know, uh, Visix package? And then once you have the Visix package, uh, like I do here, um, you basically just click on install. VS Code will say, hey, third-party extension might be a security risk, you know, whoop, 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 kind of a thing. And you say yes. Now I've got Prettier installed, and uh, it'll actually show up here as my code formatter. So uh, whenever I do code, it'll make it nice and nice and pretty for me, um, which is kind of kind of cool. All right. Um, one of the other things I did want to show you is <clears throat> from the PowerShell aspect is once you open PowerShell, um, uh, once you install it, it'll actually put a little PowerShell uh, command explorer there, a little PowerShell uh, preview thing. And when you click on that, it'll list all of the PowerShell commands um, that you can do. Okay, so um, this is it. This is all the all the modules that I have loaded. Um, you know, if I wanted to, and I wanted to do a get DBA reg server, if I clicked on this, okay, um, I can go in there and I can do the get help for the command. So it'll automatically go out and do a get help for me um, for get DBA reg server. Um, I could, add, you know, it'll go out here and open up the DBA tool site. Boom. If I want to do that. Um, and then I can actually insert the command. Oh, and that's because I don't have it. I have the integrated console running. But <clears throat> what it would do is it would insert the command directly into um, a file. Let me just do that and do an insert. So I can do that. So get reg server, I would write my, you know, this is my code, da 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 da. da. And then I'm like, oh, I got to do this command. Let's, so, uh, let's do the get uh, rep server. Um, I can click there and it'll just, oh, okay, now I know I got to insert that, blah, blah, blah. Um, that's, you know, very helpful when you're dealing with, uh, you know, creating your own PowerShell scripts. All right, so let's get rid of that. 
Now, getting onto the uh, the obviously database stuff, um, I've only got the I think I've got about 10 minutes left, less than that. Um, you obviously know about if you've worked with ADS, you know about connections. Um, I am running two local servers here, 1401, and this is actually SQL in Linux containers in Docker. So I'm running these two Docker containers um, with, uh, you know, <clears throat> no databases in them. Uh, and I also have an Azure connection. So when you open up the connections inside of ADS, you can add your, you know, server connections, obviously. You click here. Um, you can create a folder and categorize them. You know, you, you probably know all this. Um, <clears throat> but I work a lot with Azure. So if I put in my Azure account, which you do by clicking on here on your accounts and you add an account like that, um, <clears throat> if you click on that, it's going to go out and scan everything you have in Azure. And then it's going to bring up all of your subscriptions that you have. <clears throat> and then you can actually drill down and you can see if you have any SQL databases. And you're like, oh, yeah, I got those SQL databases out there. Um, and I got a SQL server out there as well. So if you want to interact with those, well, that's because I didn't have the password in there. Um, but if you want to inter interact with those, um, you basically, you know, can just bring that up. Oop. See if I can remember my own password. Uh, <clears throat> and then it goes out and it connects to that database uh, out in in, uh, in Azure. All right, which it did. Uh, so. Um, so you can see the databases here. Um, I don't have any in there, I don't think. Yeah, there's a test DB. Um, yeah, I know, because I didn't have that. And it's, it really helps if you put in, remember, password, okay? So you can, when you connect to it. Um, and then you can interact with it. <clears throat> so if you work with Azure, that's definitely something you wanna, you wanna work with uh, and be able to utilize. Um, but Back to PowerShell here, uh, and I'm going to clear this out. Uh, when you're in PowerShell uh, inside of ADS, you get this nice terminal window here. Now, maybe if you don't have PowerShell loaded, you may be, you know, problems. Um, if you've done queries and stuff like that, your problems will show up here. Um, when you do query outputs, it'll actually, you know, show you uh, everything that Visual Studio Code is doing. It's a logging, basically, um, for Visual Studio Code. And then tasks, same way you can, if you have any tasks that, you, you know, that you've done, you can, you know, you'll see the history here. But the terminal is the biggest part. And this is where you get the PowerShell integrated console. Um, <clears throat> that's the default, is PowerShell integrated. I can obviously go out and I can change it to, you know, PowerShell uh, 5.1. So this is running the actual uh, 5.1 version. The PowerShell integrated is running the 7, um, version 7. And you know that by... Um, you can relabel these, but uh, um, I can do a PS version table, and it'll tell me it's 7.0.3. Um, and then if you want to add, uh, you know, terminal screens, you just click the plus here, and it'll create a new terminal. And it'll create another one, and it'll create another one, and another one, another one, another one, another one, another one. Each one of these is actual individual sessions. So you can go back, and you can wor be working in all these different sessions. Now, it's really important to remember that in any PowerShell session, if it's not a global uh, command or it's not a global variable or anything like that, it only works within the session. So it's really, you know, each, each one of these is individual. Um, so if you're working with a database in one session and you hop over to another one, you may not be able to connect to that and you, you probably won't unless it's global. You can also do kind of cool stuff with split screens, right? So you can create two in one, um, you can, you know, create three, you can create four, you can create five, you can just keep on going and going and going. Um, but, you know, it's all about simplicity. It's all about being able to um, use uh, multiple PowerShell sessions without having to worry about um, exiting out, opening a PowerShell terminal. You can copy and paste between them, all that kind of fun stuff. And then when you want to get rid of them, you just trash can them. Okay. So now I've got eight, seven, six, five, four, three. And there's my two. All right. Now, one other thing I would just want to show you here is back to the Azure thing. Um, if you work, work, work with Cloud Shell, if you haven't, I highly recommend you do. Um, if you work with Azure stuff, and you can just launch a Cloud Shell directly from here. If you haven't done that from a PowerShell, when you do that, it'll bring up your subscriptions. Um, and the one subscription I'm using is uh, Nell Media. That's that one. And it'll ask me, do you want to run PowerShell or Bash? Obviously, I want to run PowerShell. And now I'll be able to interact uh, with the Azure, okay? Anything I've got up in Azure under that subscription. 
Why am I mentioning that with PowerShell and ADS? The reason is because um, you will be, well, if you're not now, um, in the future, you will be doing hybrid and cross-platform. So, you know, being able to do uh, multi-cloud, um, everything from working with AWS, RDS, uh, working from Azure, SQL managed instances, SQL databases, SQL servers, and also on-prem. And this way you'd be able to open up now, I'd be able to work in Cloud Shell here. Cloud Shell has the ability to work both on-prem and in the cloud. So does PowerShell. So I can go between the two and I can, you know, keep on switching between them and, and you know, being in, <coughs> excuse me, multiple worlds at the same time is, is optimal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm already connected to these databases. I'm going to go back into my uh, into my PowerShell prompt, and I've got a couple things that I'm going to uh, show you here. Now, uh, one of the things I did want to show you in Azure, um, if you've never done this before, and sorry, I hit my keyboard. Um, if you've never, you don't know this, but Postgres. I don't know if anybody works with Postgres. Um, they added a uh, AZ command to easily create Postgres uh, if you've never done that before. Um, wow, I'm not even typing. It's like somebody has control of my uh, computer here. This is crazy. Um, all right. Well, that was fun. Um, let me see if I can get back to it. Yeah, somebody took over my, uh, oh, let's trash can that. Yeah, maybe Jason's messing with me and he took over my keyboard. I don't know. We'll see. I am not that clever. <laughs> <laughs> All right, real quick. Uh, I just wanted to show this. If you work with Postgres, I don't know if you do. But uh, I work with it quite a bit from a appliance perspective because, as you know, Postgres is really a, it's not really an interactive type of database. It's more for, you know, basically data. Um, but you can just do an AZ and then a Postgres and an up. And boom, chakalaka, it will go through and it'll create a uh, Postgres database for you. Um, and it'll give you all the credentials. It'll uh, um, give you the, uh, you'll be able to go into the UI and then give it the commands to, um, open it up to the outside world. Otherwise, it's, it's locked down to the inside world. But uh, this really helps you out. And if you ever, you know, want to test with Postgres, um, it takes a little while to run this, so I'm not going to uh, let this sit and go. But it's really kind of cool. And now I can switch back because obviously, you know, that's just going to run in the background. Um, so once that actually is up, I don't know if anybody's worked with AWS and worked with, you know, being able to do that, but there are PowerShell command lines for AWS and it includes interaction with RDS. So if you have a SQL database up in, uh, up in AWS, you can interact with it. Actually, I can probably make the uh, <clears throat> connection to it. Um, I created this, if they didn't shut it down already, which is possible. Um, let me see if I can make my connection to it. And that should be, sorry for my typing, uh, I'm, a, I'm a single uh, two finger typist. So um, let's just see if I connect that. Yeah, I'm wondering if it's, um, yeah, I don't know what that is. It's possible that they shut it down on me already. I'm not sure. Let me see. It sees a default, but I don't think it'll let me in. Yeah. I'm um, sorry about that, but it, you can connect to AWS databases. I did it yesterday. Um, I've been working with another team, and they, <clears throat> I believe that they stopped those instances, but um, I didn't check this morning, so I apologize. Anyways, um, I'm going to run some stuff against my local. How much time have I got, Jason? Am I, am I almost over? Uh, about 10 more minutes. Okay. I'll do about five, five, five more minutes. I don't know if there are any questions out there, but uh, I'll do a couple more here. Um, <clears throat> so let me get out of there. Um, you can see I'm connected to local databases, right? In PowerShell, you, what you want to do is you want to do, because um, you're working in, a, in an individual session, right? 
So you want to do an import of your DBA tools. <clears throat> and then you want to do an import if you are going to be using them, um, you know, your uh, SQL Server and using those as well. And that's because it'll complain. And the reason is, is because DBA tools is taking over some of SQL Server. DBA tools tells you this, that this might happen. And that's cool because I don't use a lot of SQL Server. Uh, but they have conflicts because they kind of, you know, a lot of them do the same thing. So um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up my credentials to connect to them. And I'm using the SA. So I'm just asking what the uh, <clears throat> SA password is. And I'm storing those, okay. And I'm going to set an instance for my uh, the instance I have running on 1433. I have another one running on on uh, 1401. Um, so I'm setting that instance one to that variable to that. And basically, you're just going to go out. You know, you're going to go out and do a get database and see what it comes back with and see if it errors out or it actually does it. There you go. So this is running SQL Linux in a container, and you can see it's just got the the de facto databases in there. Um, but I'm interacting directly with that database, and I would be able to do this multiple times. I'd be able to actually, you know, keep on adding databases until I'm blue in the face, where I can interact with them within a single session, and I never have to leave ADS. I can still go out, and I can still go in here um, into the database, and I can run actual queries if I need to. You know, I can go right here, and I can say new query, um, you know, and then be able to run a query at the same time I'm running PowerShell. So it allows that flexibility. You don't get that flexibility in SSMS. You can only run the queries. We, you know, PowerShell is, you can do all this at one time. And, um, you know, uh, it's a lot easier. So, uh, you know, that's the gist of it. Um, I'm not going to take up a lot more time just uh, connecting to those. Let me go back and check and just see if that uh, Postgres got done. Yeah. Postgres got done. It actually tells you what the host is, uh, what the password is, what the username is. Um, so you basically have a Postgres database. Let me see if it's actually out there. Should be. Um, go to all services and you type in Postgres. And let's see a Postgres. Oh, there it is right there. Um, so, you know, it just, boom, created that, that server for me. I can go in there and I can, you know, do all kinds of fun stuff um, inside of there. So hopefully they'll have that down pack as a single command for SQL soon. I don't know if they're uh, planning on that or not. But uh, I'm running out of time. I talk way too much. I apologize for that. Um, does anybody have any questions out there? I got to open up my uh, q and Yeah, there is one question out there so far. Uh, and the question is, is um, that uh, the, the, the uh, questioner has had to use the VSX files uh, when they don't have internet connection to load the extensions into ads is oh, there sure. an alternative for those environments that don't have an internet access for uh, loading the vsx yeah yeah so um what you can do is uh if you you don't have internet access obviously you have to get those somehow right so you'd be able to download uh the the visix package and it's a single file so when you're out there like this prettier code if I go out to the actual repo out in GitHub and I take a look at uh, the releases, you'll always see a releases thing there. If you click on that, this is the, vis the VisX right here. So you can just take that VisX file and then put it on a USB stick or um, be able to you know, create a, you can even go so far as to create your own repo that you can connect to. So I don't know if you've ever done this, but <clears throat> you have GitHub Enterprise, right? Where you gotta pay for. But I don't know if you knew this, but you can actually stand up a free version of GitHub. Um, it's not called GitHub, but you can stand up a free version where you can create your own repositories that are just local, you know, that uh, don't go to the Internet, that you just put your own stuff into. And you don't have to, you know, uh, GitHub Enterprise is really cool, but there are alternatives to it as well. Um, but you just need this file. And no matter how you get it, if it's a, a manual on a, a, a USB stick or, you know, bringing it over on you know, on a, on a floppy, <laughs> I don't know how you get it there, but uh, you need to, to just import that and it would be able to do that. Now, if it had any dependencies, okay, so as an example, when you load um, the Azure Big Data one um, or the yeah, Azure SQL Big Data extension, 
it has a bunch of dependencies that it has to go out and get. And it'll actually, you know, say it. it's going out and it's downloading this and downloading that and the other thing. So you're going to want to do that locally and see what the dependencies are and then kind of throw them all together and, and be able to do the install. Excellent. Uh, those were the only, that was the only question that we have uh, queued up here. Uh, so with that, I think uh, we are good for today. So Mike, this has been a great presentation. Um, Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I, I can't tell you, it's really great to present to this group. I've heard, uh, I heard a lot of great things about you guys. So this is awesome. Thanks. Ah, awesome. Thank you. And thank you everyone for attending today. Uh, and I guess that is it for the day. So thanks again, Mike, and uh, thanks everyone for attending. And with that, I'm just going to close things out. Cheers. Have a great rest of your day.